Well, today we're going to fit the Garmin V2 wider pod on my Garmin pedal because my standard one broke, which is the 13 to 15 mil. Now, there is some disadvantages with the wider pod. It actually has a wider plug and the ribbon's a bit longer, but uh, it should fit. So let's get into it and I will show you how you put that on your bike with your Garmin V2 pedal. Now here we have the, the new Garmin and this is the one which has the it has the 15 to 18 millimeter ribbon that comes around the back here. So this is the new one which has the wider ribbon and this one here is the old one which is the 12 to 15 mil and this has the shorter ribbon. So what they're designed for is <clears throat> wider and narrow cranks and you can also see that the plugs the plugs are also uh, a bit different because this one's shallow and this one's deeper. So that's to allow for the, the wider cranks. Now, <clears throat> this one, which is a standard one, is really hard to get now and very difficult to find on the internet. So I had to go with this wider one and I've measured the cranks and I think it should work. It's got a little bit more ribbon and it fits in deeper. So this is gonna stick out a little bit but I've checked it on the bike and it's not going to clip the chain stays or anything when it's rotating. So it should be fine. Now, what do we have here? I've got my chorus crank set that this pedal's going to go on. And this is what it came off originally. And this is the pod that I'm putting on. Now, this is the 15 to 18 mil, not the 12 to 15 mil, which was the original one I had on. And the 12 to 15 mil is the most common one, and that's really hard to get in that size. But the chorus cranks here are actually quite wide, and they're within the specification of this wider pod that has this ribbon that is a little bit longer. So it should fit as advertised. Now, with these Garmin pedals, these old V2s, unlike the V3s, they need to be torqued up. The new Garmin pedals have an algorithm to compensate for variance in the torquing, but these ones need to be torqued up to 40 newton meters to perform their, their data correctly. And I've got a really old torque wrench here. This one belonged to my stepdad, so it has some sentimental value because he's passed now. And I've got that set to 40 newton meters there. So let's get this pedal on. Now we're just going to put the pedal on. Now this pedal here has an, a reverse thread, so we need to turn it the opposite way. So let's get that get that on. It's good to put on a little bit of grease when you put these on as well, so it makes it a bit easier to get off when uh, when it comes to removing them for traveling or you want to put different pedals on or you just want to service your pedals. So make sure that when you you put that pedal on, you get some grease in there, which just stops binding and corrosion inside the pedal. Now I've just got a little spanner to finish it off. Now let's get this old fashioned torque wrench on here and let's get it tightened up. So let's just get this. Yep. Everything wants to move. There it goes. One click, two click, three click. Always do three clicks when you're talking things because sometimes there's a little bit of extra movement in there. So now we have the pedal on and now we want to put on the pod. Now in the pod here, we have a broken circle with a hinge so it can open up so we can get it onto the actual spindle, which is about here. And there's actually a little screw that comes with it now. Quite often they have a little bit of blue paint here to lock tight the nut, but uh, I've had to use an old nut. I've, I don't know what I've done with the new one. I've misplaced it. So I'm gonna use the old one for the old one. And just make sure you lose a little bit of low strength lock tight. Now I like to use this automotive lock tight, two, four, three. I put it onto a lot of things. I find it very effective. So we just put um, a little bit of lock tight in that hole, whoops. There we go, I've done a little bit too much, so I'll just dampen that off. 
and remove some of it. Just put the lid back on so it doesn't spill. And then what we want to do is, is we want to pop this around the crank part right here. Okay, let me put it on at about that sort of angle there. And we can screw that up with the Allen key, which is right here. And this is obviously just to hold it on. It's not actually any structural type thing. So it doesn't need to be too tight, just firm. And there we go. Now here we have the ribbon that comes out of the pod and goes to the plug. Now that plug is going to plug into the back of the pedal. Then we have connection between the pod and the pedal. So, and because all the pins now are okay, I'll have full communication to the pedal. So let's just push that in. And there we go. We're good to go. So now we've got the pod on the pedal and we've got the pedal here. Now we want to go to pairing on my Wahoo. So what we'll do is, is we'll just go into that uh, setting here and we just go down to sensors. There we go. And we go add sensor, right? And now we just need to spin, spin the pedal and wait for it to connect. Come on pedal. Save Fondy, there we go. Save. Add canes and power data fields. Okay, no. So we should have, there we go, we can see it here, we can see it connected. So now we have the pedal is on, it's been talked up to 40 newton meters, the pod's connected, and the Wahoo has detected it, so it's all ready to go. Well guys, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from that on if you've got some Garmin pedals. And that's how it works. If you get a broken pin or you get a broken damaged ribbon or something like that, you can use the wider pods. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next vid. Cheers.